Namaste everybody and welcome to part 7 of Atisha's Advice from the Heart. So in the last session we finished off with verse 30. So verse 31 says, Beware, offending others is worse than dying. Therefore be honest and straightforward. So of course we all know that sometimes uh, we mistakenly offend people or people are a bit oversensitive. So we're not talking about that here. We're talking about deliberately, deliberately going out of our way to offend people. It says here that it's worse than dying. And in that way, it's trying to say that, you know, you if you go around offending people, you're going to get that sort of reputation. But also, if you keep doing these uh, same patterns of behavior, they become a habit. So if you deliberately go out of your way to offend people and you keep doing that, it becomes a habit. And once it's become a habit, that's when it becomes a problem for us. Because when it's a habit, when it's that pattern of behavior, what happens is that we start to do it from our subconscious mind. Means we're not thinking. It's not making a conscious decision now to offend people. We are just doing it from subconscious mind. It looks for patterns. As I said before, the brain is just a machine that looks for patterns. It looks for the easiest way out. So if you've always done this, you've always offended people, that is the easiest route for our brain to go. So it keeps going that way and we keep making those same mistakes. Because we're doing it now, subconsciously, we are reacting instead of responding. So you see, that's where mindfulness comes in. When we're being mindful, we can make good, conscious, realistic decisions. When we're not being mindful, then we're being run by our subconscious mind. We're just reacting and we're reacting from past patterns of behavior. So we, we need to be careful about our behavior if we're going around deliberately offending people. It says here that we should be honest and straightforward. So that's the way that we should be living our lives, being honest to people, saying things honestly to them. But, you know, if you have to say a difficult thing to somebody and you have to say it honestly, you don't have to say it horribly. You don't have to say it in a way that is going to hurt the person. But sometimes we need to say things straightforward. So I'm not talking about being uh, aggressive here because we don't want to be aggressive, but we can be assertive. We can assert ourselves in ways that are going to get our viewpoint across, but it's not going to offend or hurt somebody. So this is verse 31. We need to be checking and making sure that we're not offending people. So verse 32 says, since all the happiness and suffering of this life arises from previous actions, don't blame others. This is a great one that Atisha put in here really, because you don't uh, see this very much through the other Buddhist texts, but it is so important. Remember that our happiness and our suffering arises from our actions. So I'm not saying that you do good things and good things happen, you do bad things, bad things happen, because that's far too simplistic and the world doesn't work that way. But if we are going to do actions, constantly do actions that are going to cause suffering to other people and ourselves, then of course, again, we're going back to that pattern of behavior. And if we're doing things that uh, are making people happy and making us happy, then great. That's a good pattern of behavior to have. But what we shouldn't do is blame other people when things go wrong. Because we need to be taking responsibility for our lives. 
you know, we are so good at this blame game. Nobody taught us. We never was taught by our parents to blame other people. We were never taught at school how to blame people. We just learned. And it's so easy for us to do because it has become a pattern of behavior. Instead of looking at ourselves and seeing why did I react in that way or why did I act in that way instead of doing that it's so easy for us to say oh yeah it was their fault like when we get angry when we get angry we always say you made me angry where's the responsibility where's the growth where's the point where we can learn from that there's nowhere we cannot learn we cannot change we cannot grow if we're blaming other people we need to take responsibility. So even if something that person did, the anger arose in you. That anger didn't arise in them. It arose in you. That anger is only in one place and that's up there in your head. It doesn't exist anywhere else. So it means that we need to be looking at why? Why did I become angry? What was it? about this situation that made me angry. So instead of playing that blame game, we need to be taking responsibility for our lives. We need to be looking at why did I act or react or respond in that way? That's a great question to keep asking ourselves because the more we ask ourselves that question, the more we learn about ourselves. And the more we learn about ourselves, the more we can change and grow and become that best possible person that we all have that vision in our head, who is the, the best possible version of me. So to get to that, we need to be taking responsibility. So when things arise, it's because of actions, the actions that we're doing, that anger that arose, it arose in you. So don't blame other people. Take responsibility, look at yourself, look at why did this happen like this? Where can I change? Where can I grow? If we do a simple, simple practice like that, you are going to be that best possible person. If you're gonna keep pointing that finger and blaming other people, you will never ever be able to grow or change. So verse 33 says, a peaceful mind comes from the teachings of your spiritual guide. Therefore, show them kindness. So it's talking about teachers and uh, not just teachers, because we have spiritual guides can be anybody, you know, a spiritual guide could be somebody you don't know, but you watch the way they act and you see the way they act and you try to act like them you try to be like them it could be a teacher it could be a parent it could be a sibling a friend it could just be uh, somebody that you watch on television and you think that they're on a good spiritual path so it doesn't necessarily mean here we're just talking about uh, a teacher but what it's saying is that since all of our peaceful mind comes from those spiritual teachings, then we need to show these people who are guiding us some kind of kindness and respect. I'm not talking about being sycophantic here. I'm not talking about, you know, doing whatever the teacher tells you without questioning, because that is not going to be helpful for you. You need to be taking those teachings from the teacher or the spiritual guide you need to be thinking about them, sorting out any doubts of them. You need to be meditating on them and then implementing them. So it's not talking about here where it says show kindness to a spiritual guide. It's not talking about, you know, just treating that person as a god and putting yourself down. That's not a good relationship for any teacher to have. I really, I can't work with people who put me up on a pedestal because they put me up here then I have to look down on them and they have to look up at me that, that is not a good way to teach people 
it doesn't matter how realized the teacher is he's here to help you so we're on the same level so show respect most definitely we need to be doing that but we don't need to be rolling over for the teacher we don't need to be just teaching them or sorry just looking at them as some sort of uh, godlike figure it's not going to help you they have some realization they have some teaching so show some kindness to them but don't become sycophantic about it all so verse 34 says since you cannot tame the minds of others until you've tamed your own mind begin by taming your own mind you see this is where people get buddhism wrong that i hear it so much that buddhism is a selfish thing lots of people we used to have uh, when i lived in london there was many um, debates from different religions and all the time we were bombarded with these people telling us how how selfish buddhism is buddhism is not selfish but yes we do have to work on our own minds because if your mind is such a mess how are you going to help somebody else whose mind is also such a mess you know we need to be sorting our minds out so we can help other people so it says here since we can't help others tame their minds until we've tamed ours that is our starting point but it isn't the end point so we're not talking in buddhism about just work on yourself and make yourself realized and stop all the uh, emotional and psychological suffering and then leave it at that i mean that is selfish but that is not what buddhism is about buddhism is about bringing everybody along it's about first of all taming your mind so you can help other people so the most important thing at the beginning of a buddhist practice is to tame your mind but even then when you're taming your mind when you finish your uh, practice whatever you do when you finish your meditation or you finish your mindfulness session whatever it is you dedicate that any good that has come out of this practice you dedicate it to all beings so even when we are working on our mind we are still thinking about other people remember i'm sure i've said many times before that buddhism is like a bird and with its two wings and one wing is compassion and the other wing is wisdom so if we are going to try to gain wisdom we have to have compassion as well because if we've only got wisdom that bird is not going to fly and if we only have compassion but there is no wisdom with it then again the bird is not going to fly so we need compassion and we need wisdom so when we're working on our minds we have to keep that in mind that i'm doing it to tame my mind so i can help other sentient beings and whenever you do do a practice or you finish a practice off at the very end dedicate that and dedicate any good that has come out of this I dedicate it to the well-being of all sentient beings in that way again we are not being selfish Buddha spoke a lot about this a lot about compassion a lot about dedicating any good that comes from our practice so don't think of Buddhism as a selfish journey it's about taming our minds most definitely but we're taming them so we can help other people tame theirs in future so then verse 35 says since you will definitely have to depart without the wealth you've accumulated do not accumulate negatively negatively for the sake of wealth so i think in earlier sessions we've spoken a little bit about this about you know getting attached to our wealth and maybe even getting our wealth in a bad way in a way that is going to hurt other people this is not good <clears throat> you know if uh, you're getting your wealth and your wealth is growing and growing but other people are suffering then no good will come from that and remember even if you die with you know 
millions of dollars in your bank account. When you've taken that last breath, that money is no longer yours. It doesn't belong to you. In fact, nothing that you had in this life is yours anymore. So all that time, all that effort and all the, you know, standing on the people to get up higher so you can get more money, you know, being unkind to people so you can fill your bank account, all of that will be absolutely worthless when you take your last breath because we cannot take this with us. We can't take anything with us. When we were born, we were born with nothing. And when we go, we go with nothing. What we do in the middle, that's the important thing. So there's no need to accumulate. Of course, we need, well, we need a little bit of money. We need money in the bank. We need to have maybe, uh, particularly as you're getting older, as I am, we need a little bit of money in the bank there just in case we start to become sick. We need that security. Of course we do. We all know that. But there's a level where that stops, where we don't need that money anymore. And past that level, it just becomes greed. And then that greed is just going to cause negative thoughts for you. Because, you know, you've got one million. Now I want two. Now I want three. Now I want four. What can you do with that money? Well, what you can do is help other people. That is great if you do that. But if you're just going to put it in your bank and you're just going to accumulate that wealth and keep accumulating it till the moment you die and then you lose it, what a waste of a life. So if you've got lots of money, great. I mean, if you come up with a great, like a new app or something that makes a lot of money, fantastic. But then do something with that wealth once you've got enough for your own safety and security and your family's safety and security anything over and above that is becoming greed and you know we have so much wealth in one percent of the world now that is just obscene it really is these people are going to die with all that wealth what a waste when there's other people in the world who are starving i mean for me personally I could never be like that. If I had money, believe me, I would always give it away and help people. That's how we should be looking at our wealth as a way of security for ourselves and family and anything after that, helping other people. That's the most, you know, basic human instinct or it should be the most basic human instinct. So then verse 36 says, Distracting enjoyments have no essence, therefore sincerely practice giving. So that goes into this one as well, because this one is talking about giving, generosity. So along with compassion, generosity is a, another really big thing in Buddhism. A lot of the practices start with generosity. We have something which called the six parameters or the six perfections which is the path going towards a, an awakened mind. And the very first one, generosity, giving. So it is important for us to give because what generosity does, it gives a killer blow to our selfishness and our greed. So, you know, not all of us are rich, but it doesn't have to be money that you're giving. It could be time. It could be talking to somebody it could be helping an old person with their shopping helping somebody you know repair their car it could be anything generosity is not about just giving money it can be lots of things over here in India we do langa which means uh, you know every now and again we get food and we feed the poor and needy people fantastic thing to do I know that in other countries, I've been seeing recently all around the world, people have, and particularly with the pandemic, we've seen some wonderful acts of generosity during the pandemic. It's a shame that it takes something like a pandemic to bring that out in us. And I hope that when this pandemic goes, and I hope it goes quickly, but when it goes, I hope that we don't forget that. I hope we don't forget that our neighbours are there and they're part of 
a little community and we have to look after everybody. Remember, you know, we are social animals. We need to be communicating. We need to be uh, helping each other. I mean, it's just part of human instinct. It's a part of human instinct. We tend to be losing these days. So giving generosity is a huge thing. And remember, it doesn't have to be money. You can think of many, many other things where you can be helping people. You know, even a smile sometimes. You know, the world can be quite a lonely place, even though there's now over 7 billion of us. It can still be quite an isolating and lonely place. And particularly if you're having some mental health issues, it can be very difficult. So if you see somebody smile, it's wonderful. You know, I walk uh, my dog every morning in the same park and I've been doing this for many years now. And now there's a whole group of people and we all say hello to each other. We all smile at each other. And, you know, I just makes me feel good. I'm not just the walking and being in fresh air, but also just the morning, the good morning smile or the namaste smile. I mean, it is just so wonderful. So that's generosity. So don't think generosity means that we have to be, you know, giving lots and lots of money or give away all of our possessions. We don't. But if you have finished with something and you no longer need it, then yeah, give it away. Help somebody else. That is generosity. So the final verse that I want to talk about today is verse 37. And it is always keep moral discipline for it leads to a peaceful mind in this life and happiness hereafter. So I've spoken about this before, about discipline, about having red lines and not wanting to step over. Now we have society, they give us certain red lines. The law gives us certain red lines. But we need to be giving ourselves some moral red lines. Where where do you not want to go? What area do you not want to step into? You need to be thinking about that. Because the more that you have moral discipline, the more you're going to stay on your spiritual path. If you have no moral discipline, then of course, all the time you're going to be falling off the path. You're going to be going in the wrong direction. You're going to be hurting the sentiments of other people and hurting yourself. So it is so important to have this moral discipline. And if you do, then your mind becomes peaceful because we're not being taken into those areas, into those extremes we don't want to go. But before we can do that, we need to sit down and think carefully. What are my boundaries? Where is my red line? What do I not want to go in? What area do I not want to go into? You need to be thinking about that yourself. Because if you start to get yourself these boundaries, then they're sort of like buffers as you're going down the spiritual path. You bang into them and you come back and you bang into them. If we don't have these, these buffers, it's easy to veer off. You know, we can do something from our subconscious mind and after we've done it, then our awareness comes in and then we're like, oh no, I was no, I didn't want to do that. So before you get yourself into that position, you should be looking at some moral discipline. You know, in Buddhism, there's a, a lot spoken about uh, meditation and mindfulness. And there is also a lot spoken about what we call sila, which is this moral discipline. You can't have meditation and mindfulness practices without having this moral discipline. Because if you're off the meditation cushion and you're harming people and you're hurting people, then when you sit on the meditation cushion, then you shut your eyes. What's the first thing that's going to come into your head? All that cheating that you've done and all that hurting that you've done. So they go hand in hand. So to get a good meditation practice, to be able to tame our minds, we have to have moral discipline. 
you can't have one without the other. If you have that moral discipline, you will most definitely be able to have the meditation practice and tame your mind. When you tame your mind, your mind becomes peaceful. Your mind becomes relaxed. I wouldn't say happy. I think it's above happiness. Happiness is much of much to do about outside things. I'm talking about inner here. So think about that. Think about where are your boundaries? Where are your red lines? What are the buffers you want to put up so you know you don't go veering off your spiritual path? They're the questions you need to ask yourself. So thank you so much for joining me in this session um, seven. The next session, session eight, is the final session and we'll get up to the 45th uh, verse, which uh, we'll do next week. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, any queries, then write them in the comments. And uh, it doesn't matter if you don't write them in the comments today. If you think about them tomorrow, I will get round to answering for you. So I look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. But in the meantime, have a great week ahead. Stay safe. Thank you. Namaste. If you enjoyed this video, then press the subscribe button now. And don't forget to share the video with your friends.